my prep for this interview, I just wrote down like seven names I want to ask you about. So the next guy up is Kyler Yamamoto. A couple of days ago, you said something along the lines of, and correct me if I'm wrong, the Oilers feel like they have someone who will take Yamamoto for nothing. If that's the case, I guess my point is, what are they waiting for? Do they think there could maybe a, maybe a market could develop for him in the next six days? No, I think they were also waiting on what the cap situation was. And we've kind of gotten some clarity, although nothing official by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, in the last three hours, I've spoken to four different GMs who have all said they have not heard anything from the NHL with regards to next year's cap number. Um, not doubting, of course, the reporting from Chris Johnson, just to say that there hasn't been anything that's informed teams yet. And I think that was also part of the process was, is the cap potentially going up more than just $1 million? And if it is $1 million, here's kind of what we're thinking. Um, and here's, you know, what the team is. Here's what it looks like. And, you know, I, I think they also have an appreciation for Kyler Yamamoto and that they want to see him succeed and do well and, and might want to try and put him in the best place possible for that to happen. Yeah, that's kind of been the vibes in the chat, honestly, as well. It's like no one is sitting here, like from a fan perspective, wanting to run Yamamoto out of town, right? Like everyone understands that. I mean, he was a good oiler. First round pick, had some strong seasons here. Think about when he came up and him, Dry and Nugent Hopkins formed that line for a few months before the pandemic. That was electric. It's just, it's one of those things. He's a, he's a victim of the circumstances the team's in, right? He's also a victim of the contract that he signed and yeah. good for him to get paid that much. Um, he's a victim of the injury that happened to him last year, the neck problem that didn't really go away that can cause, you know, concussion like symptoms. And the other part of it too, is like, I think he's kind of a victim, unfortunately of his size and his frame that, um, I think not only, it, you know, when push comes to shove in the playoffs and things like that, that teams worry that he isn't someone that's able to sort of hang in the fight. And the other part of that is, does another injury like that pop up because of his slight frame that, you know, perhaps is just something to guard against. Some guys are, are fortunate in that way. Johnny Gaudreau, not really a dissimilar size and has really barely been injured in his career. 